Hello there. Today I'm messing around with oscillators, so I thought I'd do a little experiment. Right here attached to these wires is a 100 megahertz oscillator. And then on the screen here, I've got a 100 megahertz oscilloscope. So it shouldn't be any problem to see the sine wave of this oscillator on the scope. I'm going to go ahead and apply power to the oscillator and let's see what happens. So there we have a nice sinusoidal waveform displayed on the scope. Uh, I'm feeding in 3.2 volts. Peak to peak is 3.4, 100 megahertz. That seems right. I guess that proves it's a 100 megahertz scope. Hold it. I know some of you guys are twitching right now for more than one reason. And I will bring up the data sheet here and show you. This is the data sheet for the oscillator here. And you can see on the data sheet, it says it should be outputting a square wave. And it is, but we can't tell that. And there's a couple of reasons why. One is my probing technique. And I know some of you are like, ah, that's okay. I know it's wrong. It's wrong. I've got this nice antenna here uh, and I'm measuring at 100 megahertz. So yes, it's going to, so yeah, it's not going to be quite right. And that's what I was expecting. What were you thinking? And why is it so? All right, so first off, I'll demonstrate by getting rid of the antenna here. I'm just going to cut off power to the oscillator just as good measure so I don't short something. But I will disconnect this antenna. And pull that off. And I will bring in my little spring here. So let's probe this a little better, shall we? All right, I'm going to reapply power to it. I know this isn't the perfect setup. It's okay. It's what I've got at the moment, and it's just for demonstration purposes. Because this is not going to work as I want it to. All right. Now you can see it's definitely a little more square. It's not as nicely sinusoidal as you saw earlier. So it's a little bit closer, but still not quite where it should actually be. And I'm not good at explaining things, but if you look up Nyquist, you'll find out why. It's uh, basically it's basically not catching all the harmonics of the square wave. That is the reason for that. I'm going to again turn off power to the power supply. And... I'll bring in a 40 megahertz oscillator. Hook up power to that. And let's see what we see on this one. I'm going to turn the voltage down a little bit. I'm going to go 2.5 volts, apply power, and then get the probe on there. Okay, that's a little bit more like what we're expecting, more of a square wave. It's not perfect, but that's okay. It's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than the other one. This is, uh, I think 40 megahertz is close to the limits on the scope here for a square wave from that oscillator. I'll also demonstrate it on the Rigol too. So you can see what it looks like on that scope. I've got the same setup on the probe here with the spring clip. And we'll also get the measurement in there. I'm trying to work around the tripod. It's kind of challenging as usual. Well, it's not quite as nice, is it? Huh. What did I do? It should be better than that. There we go. Okay. Probe fail. Let's see if I can hold this still and turn my tongue just right. And then zoom in on that waveform. Pretty close, pretty similar, not too far off. Yeah, it's slightly different. Maybe not quite as nice on the Rigol, but close. Certainly close. And that is bandwidth upgraded to 100 megahertz on the Rigol there. I'm going to switch back to the Keysight scope. Uh, you may be wondering why I'm doing that. It's just purely for curiosity to see how the different scopes handle this. 
So now that I'm back to the scope, there's one more thing I want to demonstrate before I switch out oscillators again here. Yeah, I've got the great probe. That's good. That helps. All right. This is where I need two hands. An extra person. Okay. So if I hit this bandwidth limit, then you can sort of see what's going on. So that brings it down to 20 megahertz. And then you see it's more like a sawtooth sort of thing instead of a, a square wave. That gives you an idea of what's going on in the higher speed. So that's that one. And like I said, that's pushing the limits of the scope. So I'm not... I'm not 100% sure that's entirely an accurate representation of a square wave there for that one, but I'll go to this uh, 14 megahertz crystal here. You notice I'm stepping down in speed. Because both scopes will likely give a accurate representation of this oscillator here. Okay, so I've got, got to be careful that... Move that power pin out of the way a little bit. I don't want that touching the ground there. So I'm going to go two and a half volts there. Turn that on. Yeah, let's see what we have here for measurement. Okay, now you see we're pretty close to what what we were seeing on that data sheet there. Although this isn't the same oscillator, it's still creating a square wave, but now that we're more in a reasonable range for the scope, we can see an almost perfect square wave on this. And yes, it's not a perfect this isn't a perfect test uh, setup here. I'm just purely doing this for demonstration purposes. And yeah, see if we put the bandwidth limit on, that's 20 megahertz. You see the same effect. It's not quite a good square wave there. So that's more what we're expecting. And that's what you'd probably see if you had a higher bandwidth scope to see the square wave on the 100 megahertz. That's what you'd likely see right here. So I'm just going to switch back over to the right goal, compare on there. And then that's going to about conclude this. Okay, let's see what it looks like on the Rigel. I did do an amazing amount of playing around with this. Uh, it's kind of fun to experiment and see how things work and all that stuff. So, quite enjoyable, honestly. It's my fun time. Okay, so on the Rigel, it's not quite as nice as on the key site but it's close definitely definitely more of a square wave for sure no question about that and yeah that's um that's all the oscillators i have right now i did um manage to damage a few taking them off boards and um so some oscillators were hurt in the making of this video i'm sorry i couldn't help it one was a, a mistake of uh hitting the memory button on the power supply and feeding it 30 volts that did not go well with that oscillator and yeah that was a little bit of a mistake but you live and learn that's why i'm turning off the power supply every time i switch over because all you have to do is hit a button and next thing you know you fried an oscillator and ruined your setup here uh, i had that happen two or three times not exactly in that way i think a couple of them were just damaged pulling them off the board as does happen now i guess one thing one thing i'll do too is this with this 14 megahertz oscillator i will also um i'll hook that up with the ground lead to the rackle and i'm i'm just kind of curious on what effect that has at 14 megahertz how much it makes a difference in measuring Yeah, it's not quite doing what it did with, with 100 megahertz, but it, it definitely did introduce some extra things into the waveform there. And that's always fun to play around with these things. I don't know. I watched a video and it triggered my curiosity and I was thinking, you know, I have all these boards. I look, at, look for some oscillators and play around with them and see what's going on with them. But I hope you learned something. And yeah, oscillators are interesting.
And it's definitely not a way to measure scope bandwidth because your frequency counter will likely pick up the proper frequency, but the waveform, as you saw, is not what's actually there. So I hope that helps, and I hope that was enjoyable. It took me a while to set up and also get everything working okay, so hopefully the effort's worth it. I think, well, for my myself, I enjoyed it. Anyways. But I definitely don't have the equipment to actually test bandwidth on a scope, and I don't have a scope fast enough to see that 100 megahertz square wave signal. And most hobbyists will never have a scope that fast, so that is okay. Anyways, I'm trying trying to make use of everything I've got and learn, relearn everything, and figure out new things as well. So that's what I've been doing, and just when I see something and find out information, I like to delve into it and learn new things and just understand a bit more. Anyways, that's it for this video. Take it easy. Keep on tinkering. Bye.